Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a couple of Glock 43Xs on the table. This one that I've had for quite a while and this new Shark Coast Tactical version with a ported barrel. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Axe and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. This particular one is their Sniper Gray Static Stipple. And Shark Coast Tactical, they're a licensed manufacturer, so they start with a Glock and then they do what they're going to do and they sell it new. So I picked this up. What you're going to see today is exactly the way it came out of the box. I bought it at an FFL is new. So being a Glock, it's got all of the characteristics that you've come to use to of a Glock with a few enhancements. So you can see that there's ports in the barrel and there's ports in the slide. The ports in the slide are important. If you do ever have a ported barrel, the slide has to have the cuts to allow it to vent. Otherwise, the gun actually may just self-destruct itself. So dropping a ported barrel in a solid slide won't end the way you want it to. From the standpoint of the Glock functionality, it is a Glock. Everything on this is Glock. The fire control is exactly Glock out of the box. The slide, the MOS capability is full Glock. The color is a sniper gray and it is a Cerakote. And the stippling is stippling they've done, which just really actually, it is quite a comfortable grip. It stays in your hand and it's easy to hold on to. Did find one problem with it and that problem is the magazine, when I first got it, didn't drop free. And you'll notice it does now. If you kind of look down in there, you'll see some scratches right in here on the Cerakote. So the Cerakote added just enough thickness to drag the magazine. But after putting the magazine in and out a few times, you can kind of see where it's got a bit scratched, which of course is inside the magwell and that's fine. It smoothed out the Cerakote enough that the magazines now drop free just like any other Glock. It'll take the same optics as a Glock because this is the Glock MOS optic cut. They didn't change anything, the sights. So effectively all they've done is their static stipple, the Cerakote, and the porting, and they've left everything else a reliable Glock just like you're, you're used to. Now if this guy here is a 43X, it's one of the first 43Xs when they first came out, and I don't even believe they still offer the two-tone anymore, but this one I got when they first came out. and. This has been a reliable Glock. This would be still reliable after you make those changes because when you make changes to the, the slide and the barrel, you can affect functionality. It can become unreliable due to the changes in mass and changes in pressure. It didn't, it worked perfectly. This Glock 43X worked right out of the box, round one till we were done, just like this one, no issues whatsoever. We had one fail to fire, but it turned out to be a bad primer because I looked at the primer hit and the primer hit was good and solid. So it's just PMC ammo. So if you happen to see that in the video, that's not the gun malfunctioning, that's a bad primer and you'll get that occasionally. I had, and when I put that round in and hit it a second time, it did finally go off. Now this one here without the MOS, because this is the original one before they offered the MOS, is 18.7 ounces with the flush mag. So the flush Glock polymer mag. The MOS version of the Glock is a little bit lighter, it comes in around 18 and half ounces, and this one with the flush mag comes in around 18 ounces. So basically you shed about half an ounce with some of the metal that was removed. From a functions perspective, I mentioned it worked reliably and it's got all the same features as a 43X. One thing that I didn't expect to have so much of an impact was the porting work as well as it did. When I fired this one, and went through around a full set of mags, reloaded, went back up, fired again. I really didn't seem to notice a difference between the two. It didn't really didn't really stand out. But in one of the runs, what I did is I loaded them both up. So I fired this one, put it down, picked this one up and fired it right back to back. And when I did that without the gap in between, I could really tell the difference. This sat a lot flatter, a lot less flip. And it, that can make a big difference in these little micro guns. Sometimes they're a little harder to control, and a little harder to keep level because there's not enough mass to hold it down. And on this, you actually even lost a half ounce of, of additional mass. 
but the porting really did make a big difference. I could see a little bit of the flash uh, every once in a while. Most of the time your eyes don't pick it up. And, you know, there's always talk about porting at night, you know, blinding you. The flash is so brief that your eye really doesn't have time to react to it. So you really don't get flash blindness, especially if you use good defense rounds that have a low flash powder, like the Federal HST. If you're using rounds that have a, a lot of excess powder, you might get a little bit of flash. But really, this is not going to affect you any more than the muzzle flash that you're going to get with a, without the porting. The only thing I did notice that was different between these two, and then other than the many years of generational differences, is the trigger on this one's about a pound heavier. Now, it is a factory Glock trigger with the factory Glock connector, uh, with which they're shipping these now with what they call the minus connector. This one also has that same Glock connector. Both of these are actually factory triggers, completely factory triggers, but this one came in just about a pound heavier. I don't know if that's just changes that Glock has made over the generations of this or the fact that this one's got quite a few more rounds through it. So this has had time to polish up with range time and this one is right out of the box. Other than that, I've really found no functional differences or behavioral differences between the two other than this one sitting a lot more level. The felt recoil really didn't change but the amount of flip that the gun wanted to do was significantly less. Let me take this new one apart. You've seen the internals of a regular Glock 48. So we'll start with the frame. And the frame is, is a Glock frame. There's no changes to this other than, of course, the Cerakote and the stippling, but the internals, the mechanics, the fire control group, the locking blocks, straight Glock, everything right out of the factory. From a warranty perspective, of course, if a third party changes something, the Glock could void, void, void the warranty, if I can get the word to come out right. But it's unlikely. Anything that they didn't touch, Glock probably would warranty. The fire control group, things like that, the recoil assembly. Things they did touch, Glock probably would not warranty because the manufact their changes could affect how it functions. So the barrel probably has no Glock warranty at this point because it's been modified. Or if Glock did warranty it, all they would offer to do is replace it with a unmodified bone stock barrel. It is a Glock barrel with the polygonal rifling. And if you look in there, I'll turn it over. You can kind of see the ports. You can see light coming through the ports. You can see them on both sides. But other than that, it's a Glock barrel, just like any other. And the slide, they made no other modifications other than, of course, the cutouts to allow it to vent for the ports. But other than that, the slide is completely Glock, same sights and everything else. The drop safety is still there. All the other functionality is as you would expect. Because there's no thread on the barrel or anything on the barrel, it comes to part and goes together just like a Glock. So it's just as easy to live with and maintain as any other Glock and you're back in business. Comes at about a $100 price premium over a regular Glock. Uh, these were in the Glock case at the FFL, sitting right next to all the other Glocks. And they had it in a variety of different colors and some shiny ones. Uh, they had relatively few of the ported ones. The majority of them were just different colored stippling, different colored Cerakote, and different colored slides. So there's kind of a diversity. And I do believe you can actually order from them a specific one that you want. It may take a while for them to do it. But the key to this is you're buying it as a new gun from a licensed manufacturer, not something that you're sending out to have something done to it. And they all, the 43X isn't the only Glock model they carry. They've got the 19, I saw 29 on their site. So they're doing their various things with multiple different Glock variants. So if you're thinking about a Glock 43X or the 43, this is the X version, and concerned about the flip and twist that you can get with small guns like that, this variant might actually be a good choice. Well, long term, it should be just as reliable as a Glock, but we'll see as we run it and do take it to the range. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up. Share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere. And thank you.